Installing the Root CA. Okay, we need to start with the Windows 2003 server that's in a work group. So what we've done is we've just installed a brand new Windows 2003 server and we've given it a name of CA root so it's easy for us to identify that this one is going to be our standalone root CA. So what we need to do is we'll click on start, control panel, add or remove programs. And then we'll come over here and we'll click the add or remove windows components. Now because we're installing a certificate server, we'll need to click on certificate services. Now we get a message telling us that we'll not be able to change the name of the server or the name of the domain and this is due to the fact that this server will now be bound to the certificate authority information that's going to be stored in Active Directory. If we do change the server name later, this will invalidate our certificates. So it's just a warm, friendly reminder that if you need to change the server name or domain name for any particular reason, do it now and not after you've installed the root certificate authority. So we'll click on yes. Now before we actually continue here, if we double click on certificate services, we can actually see what subcomponents are being installed. Now you'll note that the certificate service actually consists of two separate subcomponents, the certificate services CA and the web enrollment support. Now we're going to run into a problem here, as by default IIS is needed for the web enrollment support, but IIS isn't installed on this computer. In addition, installing the web enrollment support doesn't automatically install IIS as you might think it would. So when we install the certificate services, you will get a message telling you that this is going to be a problem. But that's okay. You can either install IIS as well now by selecting the application server role here and then going down and selecting IIS. But we'll show you how to do this later. So we'll click on next. And now we have to tell the wizard what type of CA we want to install on our server. Now in a workgroup situation, the first two options here are greyed out. They're only available if your server is part of a domain. So we'll go ahead and we'll leave the standalone root CA. Now down the bottom here, we have a checkbox use custom settings to generate the key pair and CA certificate. Now I'm going to go ahead and check this box. Now you probably wouldn't need to select this option, but as this server is going to be our root CA, we can have some additional control over how we wish to configure this server, things such as the key length. So this is going to be a good idea, so we'll click on next. Now here we get to choose the cryptographic provider that our standalone CA will use to generate the public and private key pair. So we'll just go ahead and we'll choose the default here, but if you do have any additional solutions already in place that use perhaps some of these other additional uh, cryptographic providers, then you might want to use one of these to remain compatible with your existing third party software. Now if I need my cryptographic service provider to interact with the desktop, for example, if we require a smart card to log onto this server, then we would simply check this box. Now the hash algorithm over here is what our CA will use to generate a mathematical hash value from our private key for any software signatures. Now we'll just accept the default of SHA-1. Now for the key length, we have four choices. The default is a 2048-bit key length, but you can certainly change this if you wish, and we do have four options, 512, 1024, 2048, and 4096 bits. But what I'm going to do, because this is going to be our root CA, we want our encryption to be as strong as possible, so I'm going to go ahead and choose 4096. In fact, Microsoft best practices dictate that installing the root CA with a key length of 4096 and the intermediate CAs with a key length of 2048, so what we're really doing here is just keeping in line with them. Now finally, I could use an existing key to generate my certificates as well. Now I would choose this option if I had a key from an existing installation that perhaps failed and I wanted to import the key that I'd saved. Now I could simply select import, browse to where I've saved my key, enter the password, and then it'll appear in this list for us to select. And then finally, I can use the certificate associated with this key if I've actually imported one. Okay, everything looks fine here, so we'll click on next. Now we have to enter in a common name for this CA. Now you can call this whatever you want, but I'll just call this one CA root, so it uh, easily identifies the fact that we're uh, dealing with a root CA. Now down the bottom here we can change the validity period. Now when you change the validity period, the expiration date will change over here. So we'll change this one because this is our root CA, we'll change it to 10 years and the date has now changed to 10 years in advance to so 2014. Now in the middle here we see the distinguished name suffix. Now if this server was a member of a domain, then we would see a domain component of the server. So for example we'd see t dc equals test domain and dc equals com. 
but as this is a workgroup member, we'll only ever see a common name here of whatever we provided above, which of course is CA root. So we'll accept this and we'll choose next. And now we can see it's generating our cryptographic key. Now we have to provide a path for our certificate database and database log. Now if this certificate authority was generating a lot of certificates, I'd put the database and the logs on separate drives to maximize their performance. But as this is our root CA and it will only ever be issuing certificates to a few intermediate CAs, then it really doesn't matter. So we'll just accept these default paths. Now down the bottom here, we can also provide a path to a shared folder. In fact, this is actually a requirement and we'll just accept the default path of CA config. Now above this here, there is a box for storing the configuration information in a shared folder, but it's greyed out. Now if we were in an enterprise CA in an Active Directory domain environment, we'd be able to use this option to store the shared folder in Active Directory. But as we're installing our standalone root CA in a workgroup, we can't use this, but that's okay, we can use this option later on. So we'll accept these defaults and we'll click next. Now make sure you have your Windows 2003 CD-ROM in the drive as installing our root CA will require files from the CD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video here and we'll return when the certificate services has been installed. Okay, as we said when we started this installation that we would get an error message telling us that IIS is not installed and that our web enrollment support will be unavailable. So that's okay, we'll just click OK. Okay, and we're finished. So we can close all this down now. And what we'll do is we'll click on start and go to our administrative tools. And then we can see at the top here, certification authority. So we'll click on that to open up the CA MMC. And we'll just expand this to make it uh, easier to view. Now over here on the left, if we expand our CA root that we just created, we can see we have four folders. We have revoked certificates, issue certificates, pending requests, and failed requests. So let's take a look at some of the options that we have in the certification authority. So we'll right click on our CA route and we'll select all tasks. Now we can see here that we can start the service if it's uh, been stopped or we can stop the service. Of course we can also do this from the computer management MMC or the command line using the net start and net stop cert SVC command. Now we can also submit a new request. We can back up and restore our CA. Now backing up the CA is important for obvious reasons. We can use this option to back up our certificates, the database and the database logs. And of course, if our system somehow gets corrupted, then we can use the restore option to bring our system back. Now you'll notice here that I can also renew my CA certificate. Now it's unlikely that I'm going to want to perform this task for quite a while because our root CA has a lifetime of 10 years. But you can do that if you want and you might want to do this if you feel that your CA has somehow become compromised or there is a security risk as renewing the CA certificate will cause the cryptographic service provider to generate a new public and private key pair. So what I'll do again is uh, we'll leave our right click here on our CA route and we'll select properties. Now you can see that we've got quite a few tabs here so we'll go through them starting with the general tab. On this tab we can see the name of our certification authority which is CA route and what certificates that this CA is able to issue. We can see this cryptographic service provider which is the Microsoft strong cryptographic provider and we can see the hash algorithm that it's currently using which is SHA-1. Now currently our first certificate is set to zero. Now this is the first and default certificate that we have. If we want to view our certificate we can simply highlight it and click on view certificate. Now when we view a certificate we can see the purpose of the certificate and we can see the certificate name and who it was issued by. Now as this is a root certificate, the certificate will have been issued by itself as you can see. And this is simply because there's no higher authority to issue certificates than our root CA. We can also see when our certificate is set to expire, which of course is 10 years from now. If we go up to the details tab, this tells us a little bit more about our certificate. Basically it adds to what we saw on the general tab. Here we can see additional details such as uh, things like the key length. And on the certification path, we can see the path that we took to get to this certificate or the hierarchy of the certificate if you like. Now for this certificate the hierarchy is simply just CA root. Again as there is no additional CAs that provided a certificate. Now the next tab we have is the policy module. This simply determines what happens when a request for a certificate comes to this CA. So if we click on properties we can see that the default behavior is to set the request as pending and wait for an administrator to manually approve the request. Now because this is our root CA, this is fine and I'd rather manually approve a few certificates myself. But if this was an enterprise CA and it's issuing thousands of certificates, you'd probably want to set this to automatic. 
If we choose the select button, we can see which policy modules we have to choose from. Now, currently, of course, you can see we only have the Windows default module. But if you have any third party plugins, then you have others that will appear in this list. Now, on the exit module tab, we can add additional exit modules, which determine what happens after a certificate is actually issued. Now, by default, we only again have the Windows default module. But as with the policy module, we can add more if we have any third party products that actually make use of this feature. Now on the properties button, we only have the one option and that is to allow certificates to be published to the file system. And this option will write the certificate to the cert enroll share on the CA. So if you do decide to change this option, you will have to restart your certificate service for this to take effect. Now on the extensions tab, we can see the certificate revocation distribution point or CDP. Now when a client needs to get a certificate and find their way up to the root CA, they'll first need to find the certificate revocation list. Now this is important because if they cannot locate the certificate revocation list, then they'll be denied access to whatever resource they were trying to access. Now we can also select the authority information access and this is where we'd obtain certificates for this CA. Now in the windows below, we can see the locations that the CDP is stored at. And here you can see we have four default locations, uh, the, the cert enroll share, Active Directory using LDAP, uh, a web page, and of course the file system. Now down here we see a few options, publish Delta CRLs to this location. A Delta CRL is just a list of all the certificates that have been revoked since the last CRL publication. So with this setting on, we would be publishing all of the revoke certificates to the location specified above here in the cert enroll share. And we can see we're currently publishing CRLs to this location as well. And when we select some of the other different options, we'll get some different uh, options appear down the bottom here. So for example, when we include the Active Directory option, we can include in all CRLs, specifies where to publish in the Active Directory for HTTP. We can see that we'll include the CDP extensions of issued certificates and include in CRLs as well. Now the next tab is the storage tab. Now this is where we can see the locations of where our database and the database logs and of course our shared folder is actually stored. Now as we discussed earlier, if we were running this in an Active Directory domain environment, we could also elect to have our st shared folder stored in Active Directory. But obviously as we're running in workgroup mode, this uh, selection is grayed out for us. Now on the security tab, we can use the Windows Access Control List to control permissions to this object. Now by default, only administrators have the ability to change these objects, but the Everyone group has the ability to request a certificate. Now the Auditing tab is where we can select which certificate related objects that we wish to audit. Now as it says up here, to start logging events to the security log, we must first enable the Audit Object Access setting in Group Policy. Now once this has been configured, any access to these items will trigger an event to appear in the Windows Event Log. Now these items are pretty self-explanatory. We can audit backups of the CA database, configuration changes, security changes, and so on and so forth. Now on the Certificate Managers Restrictions tab, we can restrict users or groups that a certificate manager can manage. Now currently, the administrators group is the only certificate manager. Now in the window down here in the bottom, we can add and remove users from this list that the administrators group is allowed to manage. The default action is to allow access to these users or groups, but we can restrict access by clicking, of course, on the deny button, which will appear here when we actually select a user or group in this window. So we could click on restrict certificate managers, and down here you can see currently the only certificate manager we have is the built-in administrator group. Now by default, the administrator can manage the everyone group and allow access to that group. So of course we can simply click on deny if we like, and then at this point, our administrator will no longer be able to manage the everyone group as far as certificate services goes. Now I mentioned when we did install our certificate services that we would need IIS to in order to run the web enrollment support. So let's do that now. So what we'll do is we'll click on start, control panel, add or remove programs, and we'll go here to add or remove Windows components. Now we'll double click on application server, and we'll select IIS, we'll click OK, and Next. Now make sure again that you have your CD-ROM in the drive because it will require some files. Now I'll pause this video and we'll return once the files are copied to our server. OK, IIS installation is now finished, so we can click on Finish and I'll just close this down. 
Now we'll click on Start and we'll open up a command prompt. And to get IIS working with our web enrollment support, we'll need to type in certutil minus vroot and we'll hit enter. Then we can see here that the web virtual root has been created, ASP has now been enabled on our server, the file share has been created and the command completed successfully. So if you don't have IIS installed on your machine when you first install your certificate authority, this is what you're going to have to do. After you install IIS, simply come to a command prompt and type insert util minus vroot and then we're done. Okay, so we've just installed our root CA. So let's go and configure an intermediate CA next. 